Well, should I say something? Sure, go right All ahead. All right. Hello there once again, and welcome to another edition of Michigan Magazine. I'm Del Vaughn. And I'm Barry Stutzman. No, this is not a rerun. This is Del Vaughn. <laughs> he is officially retired, but he's back with us, and I don't think I'm going to ever let him go because he's going to be a part of Michigan Magazine forever. Well, you might you take uh, quite extended leaves of absence. Yeah, but, yeah uh, you know I'm yeah, going to. Yeah, but what we're doing here today is uh, kind of an interesting thing because we're just sitting back and relaxing and taking a look at where we've been and kind of reminiscing because we've been on the air oh, since 89. Yeah. And that's 18 years, 19 years? That's television. That's television. Then it was radio before that. Oh, my goodness. We have got a lot to talk about. But yeah. as we look through some of these pictures and our uh, albums of memory, we find a lot of things that it's amazing how fast this time has gone. It is, Barry. It truly is. And, you know, um, first of all, you know, we got to say thanks yes. to Steve for letting us come in here. This is another part of our memory lane. Yeah. As we're calling it, I guess, one of our memory lane. One of our favorite parts is yep. uh, being here at Maple Valley Restaurant. And uh, we were here in the early days. Uh, and uh, have found this to be a home away from home at times. Right. And, and this is a place that we meet and greet and have a good time. Well, you know, Barry, uh, over the years we have been down many a road together. Mm -hmm. And um, it's nice, you know, here's a, here's a photo right here of, <laughs> of uh, a few, three guys, uh, Devin and uh, Herb, Dan, and you. And this is out on the Asabo. You recall that? Right. Was that? We that taking was, the eagle shots? Right. That had to be about 89 or 90 when we yep. first went down the 89. river with our first uh, crew, crew, Devin. Yep. And then we were, we were shooting the eagle. Yeah. And, and we that, got a good shot. That, that eagle that you saw many years in Michigan Magazine, uh, kind of gliding down into the tree, that's where this was. And it was a very, we didn't understand or realize what we were in for back then. No. <laughs> We thought it was going to be, you know, <laughs> wine and roses and a good time. Yeah. It has been a good time, but yeah. there's been ups and downs. But to see this, it's it's a gem of a moment. Del. It really is, mm -hmm. Barry. It's it's a it's time and uh, well, it's posterity, you right? Might say right. And then uh, here's a, a good friend, uh, also uh, a gentleman. It wouldn't have been for him. It would have been right. Things have been a lot tougher. And uh, went to school with him, and he turned out to be a uh, national advertising chairman for Oldsmobile, and. Uh, was uh, one of our big underwriters. Yeah, that's one of our. Bill. That's Jerry Carr. Yeah, I'd like to thank him for helping us begin in the beginning oh, of Michigan yeah. Magazine, our first major underwriter. We've he, Oldsmobile of America. Yeah, yeah, tell you what. And you know, reminiscing. Some of the good old days, and that's a picture of the museum. Now, the museum, of course, in Michigan yeah. Magazine came about uh, through another serendipitous event, chain of events with Cy Yoder, but that's a whole other story and a whole other yes, leg to Michigan yes, it Magazine. Is. It but certainly here is. we have. Uh, uh, Forrest Green and his wife, and uh, there is uh, Florence Ryder and yep. the late Buzz Ryder, and you and Garnita. Yeah, and uh, this one right here is what our first expo. You recall that? Oh yes, and it wasn't where it is today. It no. wasn't at the Michigan Magazine Wolverine. Museum. We had it at Wolverine. Yeah. We thought we would do something, and we couldn't believe the response. And uh, that was back in 1994. 94. Yeah, yeah, 94. Expo 94. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> anyhow, they, we had quite a quite a good time. We got in a uh, log rolling contest, yeah, and, Berlin, and yeah. we got the Duncan thing. And yeah. <laughs> this is your uh, <laughs> dunk tank, <laughs> all, all in the name of uh, promoting Michigan Magazine yeah. and the Michigan Festival. Boy, yeah, I had uh, a and look this, of pain. There. Yeah, this is a couple of pictures. This is a picture of you and I up there, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, a lot of lot of memories. Another lot of times. picture of you and I, and, mm -hmm. and here's some a picture of uh, Skeeter Davis and Buzz Ryder, my wife and myself. We did meet a lot of celebrities, and a lot of celebrities yes. have made their their home in Michigan, like yes. Skeeter Davis. Uh, uh, and we had a good time down there in the uh, uh, Kalamazoo area. Mm -hmm. Hope you don't mind us, folks. We're just reminiscing. Kind of reminiscing and going you know, down memory lane. But you know, all this hasn't been smooth sailing. We've had a few bloopers in the very beginning. I mean, yes. I'm in times, and we're going to share <laughs> some of those instances with you. Are you, you. going to show them? A few, probably. Really? Remember when we were trying to do an intro at the, at the boat dock? Oh, and it took my us about goodness. an hour to get uh, 30 uh, seconds. 30 done. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Almost fell off the dock, or we was worried about the camera falling off the dock. Yeah, yeah. And that was at my sister's place. Right, right. Up at uh, West Twin Lake. Yeah, yeah. When I first uh, got out of the service, I was singing with a gentleman called Fred Buchanan. Yes. Called Mr. Rock mm -hmm. and Mr. Roll. And this is when we were up there at um, up by Honor. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's Fred Buchanan and myself uh, a few years ago. You see how magically the, the the color of the van changes. Yes. Year to year. I mean, yes. we've had about three. Thanks to Jerry Carr. Yep, the Oldsmobile. Yeah. And that was uh, we've had about three or four different vans. Yeah. Oh my goodness, we've had uh, five, six. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Besides the Bavaria. And here's another one. Remember this one here up at Wakefield? Oh, we were, Wakefield. Oh, Wakefield is one of my favorite places. Yes. We had a great time in Wakefield. It's way up in the Upper Peninsula in the uh, east, uh, west, Far west. west part of the state. Yep. And uh, they treated us like royalty. And we had a good time. And we were almost ready to head on out 
of Wakefield and hit the road, but they really had a desire to keep us there. Yes, they didn't want they, us to oh, go, and we, we, had, we had interviews to go. But you know what? They had planned a very nice reception for us. You and, remember that? Uh, and I, I praise right. God that we stayed there and, and went through with this oh. and we kind of rescheduled ourselves. But uh, as you see here, this is what happened. You know, we yeah. had all these dancers and singers from Wakefield turn out to help us and celebrate and say thanks, Michigan Magazine. Should we take a look at it now? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. On an earlier edition of Michigan Magazine, you may recall a recent trip we made to the Wakefield area of the beautiful Western Upper Peninsula where we were treated to an old-fashioned community get-together at Eddie Park on historic Sunday Lake. We feasted on delicious ethnic treats along with wonderful hospitality. In that edition of Michigan Magazine, we can only give you a sample of the wonderful ethnic music that area performers played for us while we dined. On this program, we return to learn more about those wonderful musicians and performers and let them play for you music of their fatherland. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Another Finnish favorite was performed by Wakefield resident Carl and his daughter Mary Ann. combination wonderful Finnish folk music and delicious food not only Finnish but Italian hear the music of Italy with group members Jerry Prico, Rose Armata, Dominic Petroni, Dante Prico, Riva Vittor, Lucy Winkowski and Ruth Raniero <laughs> Music like that sure can work up an appetite, but music like this will certainly work it off. This Yugoslavia folk music is performed by band members Eli Meljevic, Gert Michaels, Raleigh Meljevic, Rose Armada, Rudy Verbos, and Joan Pavlovich. certainly did have a wonderful day that day, a warm summer's day on the shores of Sunday Lake at Eddie Park in Wakefield, Michigan, in the beautiful Western Harbor Peninsula. If you're ever in the area, be sure to stop by and say hi. You certainly will be welcome. We'd like to say thanks to all the fine people of Wakefield and the entire western part of the Harbor Peninsula, who always make Dell and myself feel quite at home. And a special thank you to our guides, Garland Miller and Esther Wacker, who are always there to showcase their special part of the world, Michigan's Upper Peninsula. The Upper Peninsula is always a wonderful place to visit. You know, I tell you what, you know what, Garland Miller was such a uh, person, oh. a promoter up there in the uh, Wakefield yes. area, and she, uh, she... I haven't heard from her in a while, but... Uh, <clears throat> as a matter I'm of sure fact, I did hear did from you? her a couple weeks ago, really? and she's got other things in Wakefield. She wants us to come up there, and uh, maybe I'll drag you along one of these days <laughs> and make a revisit to, to Wakefield. Okay. But that's a nice place up there. It is. It's and a wonderful uh, place. They really threw out the red carpet for mm -hmm. us, and 
the hospitality was just exceptional. Mm -hmm. And here's another photo of my friend Jerry Card and I. This was up at the in the Oldsmobile building. Oh uh, yes, in down Lansing. in Lansing. Right. That's when they were making Oldsmobiles. And here's a <laughs> here's here's his son. They don't make them anymore. Here's his son Grant. <laughs> yes. Back in ninety. Well, that was a uh, ninety. A special we did Three. at the Music House. That's yeah, your special. In Acme. Shall we take a look at that now? Let's take a look at some of the great things that happened at the Music House that day. Okay. It was a romantic and fascinating time in the world of music, the period of the late 1800s through the 1920s. Player pianos as well as huge automated music boxes were incorporating the latest automation technology to recreate live performances for the entertainment of the masses. For instance, this huge, magnificent 97-key Mortier dance organ with its 30-foot hand-carved front was built in Antwerp, Belgium in 1922 for the Victoria Palace, utilizing cardboard books with precisely punched holes that keyed various instruments through a system of pneumatics. It produced dance melodies that would shake the walls of dance halls. It was considered as close as one could get to live performances of the day. If you're a connoisseur of this period music or not, the Music House, eight miles north of Traverse City on US 31, will mesmerize and fascinate you. The Music House is home of one of the most impressive and rarest collections of automatic musical instruments. In our visit to the Music House, we talked with one of the curators, David Steffler. Where did this concept come from? Well, the center of the museum, of course, is automated music, and most of these instruments are uh, part of the collections of several different individuals that were uh, given into a nonprofit corporation a number of years ago, so they could be made available to the public rather than squirreled away in someone's basement. The principal ones uh, are from about the 1880s up to about the 1920s. The 1920s was sort of the golden age for the sort of thing, a fascination with gadgetry. And uh, I'd like to point out that uh, a lot of this flowed over into the uh, computer age. And so there's a progression of uh, techniques and equipment which can be followed through. Mm -hmm. Back in the 1880s, the sophistication for automated equipment was truly there, wasn't it? I mean, to progress into the modern day of technology of uh, uh, digital programming now. It, they had quite an idea back then, too, d despite not being able to use computers. Most people are quite surprised at how sophisticated and complicated some of these machines are and uh, how they perform. From high in the loft were the more tier rests to the Little Lyric Theater downstairs, where David demonstrated a music box, which was one of the first to utilize electricity, and was declared one of the eight great inventions of the new century at the 1909 Alaska-Yukon Pacific Exposition. So when you turn it on, we might see a little arcing going right, on in there. there. A little flashing is down below. It is the solenoids, uh, variable speed motors, uh, controlled by the holes in the paper. The Music House, another must-stop for the Michigan Traveler. Now that we're back again, yeah. I'll finish this up with Jerry. This is a, remember the guy who, who built the um, mailboxes, the different oh, mailboxes? Oh, yes, yes, and he um, built us a fine um, uh, Michigan oh. Magazine uh, uh, mailbox. Right. His last name is Tim Wagner. Tim that, Wagner exactly. is his name. Exactly, yeah. I forgot his name. All these names come. I, you can remember some, They're friends, so well. they're family, yeah, you know. Right. Sometimes I have but, a moment. Yeah. And uh, anyhow, it comes back was, a flash. That was, uh, that was uh, the, the Oldsmobile, uh, uh, one of the first Oldsmobiles that, uh, right. that they built. Wow, my goodness. Very. And I've got to, you know, vary our families. It wasn't for our families, boy, we wouldn't be sitting here today mm. for all the encouragement and, and uh, all the work that they've done with us and the uh, support that they give us. And this is a picture of my family, uh, my complete family, except for I haven't got my grandson, Tommy, uh, Vassalone, and Shannon Vassalone, but all mm -hmm. the rest of them are there. That was the early days of the museum? Yep, and that's when it first opened oh, up. Right, you, you see things change color sometimes, yes. like the museum is darkened up. And yes, it has, yes, it colors. has. But our family stays consistent, yep. and they were real big supporters, and they continue yep. to be some big supporters yes. of this. We went through some hard times. Yeah, but and here's my other photo of my sons. Yep, there you go. You know, Barry, uh, and speaking of shows that we've done, uh, it, it's hard to, to say that there's any one that stands head and shoulders above the others. Mm -hmm. They're also very precious to us. And little did we, did we realize uh, at the time that we were doing this, 
that it would be uh, such a a moment, such a, mm. a precious moment, mm. as you get older and you go back and you reflect upon these special uh, times with people who have become friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, one in particular that uh, I uh, take great joy in is the um, as the Boy Scouts over at Northwoods uh, oh, yeah. uh, campground over there. And what really lifted my spirits um, is when they sang Soar Like an Eagle at the campfire. Oh, yes. Well, why don't we take a listen to that when they did that? You first gave a little speech, and then they sang Soar Like an Eagle around the big campfire. Okay, let's do that. First, I would like to say thanks to Dan and Melinda for being a Boy Scout many years ago and our family. It's a real pleasure to be here and to do this segment for Michigan Magazine. It's a humbling experience to be here in front of you all. I would just like to say I hope you all soar like an eagle and God bless you all and we're going to make this the best possible show that we can possibly make it. So thank you very much.